Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. A potential UK showdown between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua at some point in the future would likely not be held in the UK. A fight Eddie Hearn, Joshua's promoter, has described as potentially being the biggest fight in British boxing history, likely, in Hearn's words, to be in somewhere like Saudi Arabia. So he said to IFL TV, if it was the difference of £10 million each, but it's not. It's double, and it can't be ignored, and this is on the likely venue being somewhere like a Saudi Arabia. And these sorts of comments are likely to anger and inflame some boxing fans, particularly those in the United Kingdom who've been connected to the careers of both Fury and Joshua, both obviously having built their names in the United Kingdom. So I want to talk about that in this video. And uh, being not from the UK, even though some people can't really discern the accent, I'm from New Zealand, I wanted to weigh in on this because I can sort of see both sides of the coin here because I'm not invested as much because I don't live in the UK. If I think if I was from the UK, I'm sure I might be a bit more annoyed about this. But ultimately, some of this just comes down to the almighty dollar. Although the fighters have made, uh, in particular Joshua, statements before that sort of, you know, he wants to be fighting in the UK, but decisions are sometimes outside of his control. But I guess the question is, is it? So in terms of Joshua and Fury, I mean, at the moment, it's just a sort of a fantasy fight. Both would need to continue to win. And even if they don't win, it might be something that happens a couple of years down the line. I, I think worst case scenario, they don't have any belts. They just have a big fight. Best case scenario would be for Undisputed maybe in a year or so. But either way, boxing fans want to see that fight. They are among the sort of best three heavyweights in the division. And those two squaring off in their primes is sort of something a lot of boxing fans feel they need to see because obviously there are questions about who is the best of the generation and there's sort of three or four fighters that hold claim to it fury and joshua being among them and if we don't get to see that fight especially when they're in their primes maybe we will feel a little bit robbed that we should have seen it but didn't get to have it but say if it does happen I think a lot of people have just thought, well, it would be a 100,000 sort of seat Wembley type fight, a big occasion, one of the biggest in British boxing history, one of the biggest fights in the heavyweight division, whatever year it would be in, it would be a tremendously meaningful and big fight. But obviously outside money, outside influence would seemingly change the game here with Hearn sort of saying, look, it's not just a difference of 10 million pounds each would likely to be double that. And in the context of this fight, the interest that the Saudis have already sort of shown for an undisputed fight involving Joshua and Fury or Joshua and Wilder, maybe it would actually be more than double sort of 20, uh, 10 million pounds. Perhaps it could be 30 or 40 million. It could end up being a massive, massive amount of money. And that's the thing. These guys, at the end of the day, they're prize fighters. Sure, they do it for the legacy, the prestige and the honor, and they love to have their boxing fans wherever they may be, including the ones that they came up with in the United Kingdom. At the end of the day, they do do it for money. They do it for their families, for generational sort of change and having the sort of money to influence the, their lives and grandchildren's lives and to set themselves up in uh, generations to come. And that's often one of the things that I guess as a fan, we do take for granted that we just want to see the fights. We want to see certain things happen, but there's always more factors at play. And when you have an outside interest wanting to pick off one of the biggest fights in the heavyweight division, that would be this decade, Fury and Joshua would be one of the fights of the decade in terms of how big it would be. So if you had that in the Saudi Arabia, there'd be a huge amount of money in play. And I guess this is the issue. A lot of people, fans of Joshua and Fury, have come up with them, you know, right since Fury turned pro in the late 2000s and Joshua in 2013. People feel connected to these fighters. Obviously, Tyson Fury having been champion, he's the lineal heavyweight champion at the moment. A great backstory behind him. Joshua uh, with a unified champion currently having won his first title in 2016, lost it in dramatic fashion to Andy Ruiz Jr., claims it back. 
both these guys are big names in the the sport of boxing and more broadly they do have a worldwide following maybe they're not superstars in world sport maybe they haven't quite reached that sort of ronaldo type level but if they have the big fights they're on their way and this is where somewhere like saudi arabia can help because obviously the money and the prestige but there is something to be said about having it local, having it in the UK. And remembering, Joshua's promoter Eddie Hearn has spoken at length before about it being the biggest fight in British boxing history. So he knows the stakes, but he's willing to make the fight elsewhere because of money. And some people will bristle at that. And Joshua himself, has um, he's been a bit sort of all over the map, not just this, this fight, I'm not saying this one, but previously he's made comments about wanting to fight in the UK, wanting it to be for the fans and that sort of thing. And especially the last fight with Ruiz Jr., he wanted it to be in Cardiff. He said all these things and then turned around and it went to Saudi Arabia. And he tried to sort of position that as it was out of his control. But we keep hearing from Eddie Hearn that Joshua's the boss. So there is more sort of stake in this that Anthony Joshua has than maybe he would like to sort of admit. But at the end of the day, and it's that sort of money on the line and you might get an extra 20, 30, 40 million dollars. It's pretty hard to turn down and your career can be over in a in a heartbeat in boxing it can be over one fight later there's no guarantees and it's a short lifespan even for a, a healthy heavyweight boxer you might get 10 years some get a little longer some get a little less and the prime sometimes can be a even shorter window you don't just come into your prime and sometimes your prime can ebb away we've seen plenty of examples of boxers by about 32 or 33 their prime has seemingly gone earlier than it should have i mean just think francesco Pianetti he fought fury in 2018 he was in his early 30s there but he looked completely shot compared to the guy who had a title shot four or five years earlier versus vladimir klitschko but yeah i know that there's not going it's not going to make a lot of people happy if those goes elsewhere because it's an all uk encounter which would do a huge amount of business in the united kingdom but I'm sure the argument would be from Eddie Hearn, if he was to really sort of try justify it, that they would have it in prime time like they did for the Ruiz and Joshua rematch in Saudi Arabia. They would uh, have the schedule there with the time differences to line up with prime time, having a ring walk, maybe eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock, something like that at night. But I did see a tweet from one of my followers on Twitter, Lee Page, who says, Without us boxing fans, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua and even Eddie Hearn would not be in the position they are in. So if Eddie decides to take an all UK battle between Tyson versus AJ to Saudi, then I think us Brits should stop buying the pay-per-view tickets and merch. Hashtag a boxing fan. And I know that um, Lee Page, the sentiment there, he speaks for a lot of other fans who are seemingly, you know, very annoyed at the prospect that what would be, as Hearn has described, one of the biggest, if not the biggest boxing match in UK history could go offshore and that money that reason being money so i can sympathize with the position obviously for a lot of um, boxing fans who aren't from the uk like myself you know i'm not so invested in it because uh, obviously i'm not there i'm not i haven't come up with them there i haven't gone to the shows there so you know i'm a, a bit more detached and i'll get to watch it regardless so you know it doesn't really worry me as a fan from somewhere else you know on the other side of the world in new zealand where this fight would be it's just that it's got to happen kind of like all these big fights that's kind of my position i just we just need to see them but i sympathize with that position of lee page and others who will support that position because obviously you know it would be a massive massive event and if you take it to saudi arabia some of the consequence will be i mean i think we saw it in the um, the ruiz jr and joshua rematch even though it looked like a fantastic stadium, it was one that was constructed in a couple of months and packed away, um, you know, took a couple of weeks to pack it away and they'll wheel it out for big events. But it does sort of seem like there's a bit of a lack of atmosphere in Saudi Arabia with the crowds. There's something missing. The buzz isn't quite there, but that's because it's not really a boxing country, not a boxing sort of town. Yeah, uh, I mean, this you're not going to make everyone happy. But I mean, Saudi Arabia will want that fight because it's one of the biggest in boxing history in terms of recent memory. But they can also, you know, do the whole sports washing thing, trying to change their reputation through big events. And Fury's been there for that Crown Jewel event as well. So it wouldn't be unfamiliar territory to him or Joshua, who've both had different combat sport, sporting events in Saudi Arabia. But it also raises the question here. 
is it only going to be you know the big fights that are off in these uh, sort of remote locations that aren't necessarily boxing countries remembering they were talking about potentially Kubrat Pulev and Anthony Joshua in Turkey although that hasn't been confirmed but it, is it seemingly going to be the real big the jewels of the sport those events would they be where the money is and it makes a lot of sense and obviously the almighty dollar sort of rules but does that mean that you know and i don't want this to come off the wrong way but does it mean that the second rate events would be held in the uk still good fights but not the cream of the crop you know would it end up being like a two-speed economy a joshua fury or a joshua wilder you know in saudi arabia for example and then maybe you have and no disrespect to kubrat pulev you have kubrat pulev and joshua because it's a mandatory and less interest in the united kingdom and that the only time you get to see joshua or a fury in the united kingdom is for those fights that are seemingly less attractive to outside bidders with the money who hold the purse strings it's a thought. I mean, it sort of seems like that could happen. Remembering that Cardiff missed out on that rematch between Joshua and Ruiz, I think we've already seen it. And they're signaling already that Saudi Arabia likely to get Fury and Joshua. So could a two-speed economy on the venue front open up here? What do you make of it all? Are you annoyed if you're from the UK or do you just think this is just sport playing out? The almighty dollar sort of rules the day and they're prize fighters after all. Drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out